Call to order. This is the 18th regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our Deputy City Clerk Linda Long will read the quote of the evening. At the close of another year, we pause to wish you a warm and happy holiday season. Thank you, Linda. Roll call, please. Warren? Here. Bout? Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hannah? Here. Heideman? Here. Kath? Here. Kittleson? Excused. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Riesler? Here. Sampson? Here. Van Vanderweel? Here. Versi? Here. Wangaman? Here. Fifteen. We have a quorum. Now if uh, Alderman Sampson can please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kevin. Looking for approval of the minutes of the former Common Council meeting. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we approve the previous minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the previous minutes under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resignations, I don't believe. Uh, Attorney McLean. Uh, there's one uh, mayor dated December 17th to the mayor from Ed Wachowski, Jr., informing uh, the mayor and the council of his resignation from the Mead Library Board of Trustees effective December 31, 2010. Vice thank President you, Honor. I move that we accept the resignation of Ed Wachowski and thank him for his service. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resignations, to accept the resignation. I too would like to thank Mr. Wachowski for his years of service to the city. Um, agree or disagree with Mr. Wachowski at some points, he uh, definitely was dedicated to what he did, so we thank him. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Um, Attorney McLean, I believe. Yeah. All the person, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to refer to salary and grievance, the appointment of the consideration of the appointment for city assessor. Second. We have a motion and a second to refer to salary and grievances under discussion. There is none all in favor of sending the salary and grievance say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Attorney McLean. And uh, dated December 20th, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Herb Binkowski to be considered for appointment to the City County Shared Services Committee to fill the unexpired term of Greg Wegeman, whose term expires 425 2011 signed by the mayor. That lies over. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, before the next meeting, could we get some information on Mr. Binkowski? Certainly, we'll get a, we'll get a, uh, a resume on Mr. Binkowski. Thank you. For, thank you, for a bio. Okay, are there any other appointments? There are none. Okay, um, Mayor's comments, I would just like to wish everybody a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and happy everything else that you may be affiliated with. It's a very special time of the year. Uh, it's a time where we should start thinking of others instead of thinking of ourselves. Um, I believe everybody in this room thinks of others. That's why we serve the community the way we do. Obviously, nobody's in this for the money. We do it because it's in our hearts. So I wish the Common Council and all the citizens of Sheboygan a Merry Christmas. And Alderman Balk would like to say a word. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You've set me up to be quite a Grinch, I think, over the next couple of minutes, but uh, only to 50% of the taxpayers. <coughs> I rise to, uh, to say, uh, in the interest of the taxpayer, just to remind people out there that there are nine open seats uh, on the Common Council this April, and we need to get 20 verified signatures. If you would choose to run, you need to get 20 verified signatures to the city clerk's office uh, by January 4th at 5 p.m. I found it interesting, Mr. Mayor, that last night, 60 minutes of all 
chose to finally come to the table of awareness of unsustainable financial practices, 60 Minutes now recognizes what former Chairman Hanna of the Finance Committee and what former Chairman Gisha of the Finance Committee have been talking about, luckily for our city, for the past three years. Uh, 60 Minutes has come to the conclusion that uh, state and municipal budgets have unsustainable uh, um, benefit packages in them. Uh, and uh, Governor Christie of New Jersey last night commented on several numbers that would astound you, that not just m -m millions anymore, b -b billions, but tri tri trillions. And, and the state of the municipal bond market is such that if you recall back in October, maybe early November, uh, Warren Buffett has decided to di divest 17% of his muni bond holdings because in his quote, and he's a very humble man, but his quote was, people would tell you basically I'm the best investor of our generation and I have no idea how to value these muni bonds anymore and if anybody tells you they do know how, they're either lying or they're just plain wrong. So the greatest investor of our age has decided that municipal budgets are so volatile, we have borrowed so much money and have such an inability to potentially pay it back that he is divesting a, a huge number, a huge portion of his portfolio. So um, what my, uh, my uh, imploring to the to the taxpayers would be if you have any financial or strategic organizational leadership education, experience, uh, or relationships, we need you on this council. Uh, this council needs all the help it can get to manage the future budgets. Uh, this year we kind of squeaked by with some bubble gum and some duct tape. Next year I'm not sure how much duct tape is going to get us by and so the folks that will be sitting in these chairs come April need people that have that kind of experience. Um, but we also need other people. If you have ideas for candidates, Recruit those candidates. Knock on their door and say, I think you'd be a good alderman and I'm here to help you. I'll help you run your campaign. I'll help you raise money. I'll help you drill holes in the ground and put your signs in people's front yard. Uh, I believe that we get the government we deserve. That's a great Jefferson quote. Uh, and here's what I hope will recruit some of those people that are interested in politics but maybe haven't been pushed over the edge to participate yet. If you recall the ambulance vote a few months ago, a month or so ago, it went about 55-45 in favor of keeping the ambulance. So I would suggest to you that's about how much force is behind uh, the other philosophy and the candidates they're running as aldermen. They are stacking the ballots plenty of people that will vote to raise your taxes and increase benefits. Um, if you want somebody who's going to vote the other way, uh, we lost recently 55 to 45. If you want to overcome that, you've got to get involved and you've got to find the right candidates and you've got to get behind them. You've got to work harder than you did on the ambulance because we lost the ambulance 55 to 45. So I urge all people to get, uh, get involved and participate, but I especially uh, urge those who would participate in a way of, of, of shrinking the, the burden on the taxpayer. I, I encourage them to run and support others who will run. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bob. I would just like to say to anybody who is uh, taking out papers to be a candidate, the official time, yes, is 5 o'clock on January 4th but it would be best, if possibly, to get them in by noon because we do verify all those addresses. And if by chance you would be short the 20 minimum required addresses at five o'clock, you would not have time to go out and get another signature. So just put that in your hat and think about it as far as getting them in a little earlier to give us time to verify your signatures. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Vice President Renflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I echo the, the importance of people serving. Uh, and uh, going out, uh, I urge everyone to seriously consider um, to be, participate in city government. Um, so uh, with, with the statements that we've heard this week and two weeks ago as well, I agree. You know, I urge everyone to, to participate as much as possible. My concern on the council floor is that we have a rule for no politicking. Uh, and uh, we re require the public not to politic in the public forum, which we have coming up here as well. Uh, and most of that uh, presentation we've heard from Alderman Bauck had no politicking uh, until the very end when we heard other side, um, other, um, other people, we as winners and losers. I think that crosses the line uh, and I would ask that uh, as we get closer into the uh, election cycle, uh, let the politics occur outside the council chamber uh, and uh, uh, speak to participate, but uh, I urge you not to necessarily take sides of this council chamber. We expect the public not to. I think it's, the least we can do is expect ourselves not to as well. 
Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Alderman Buck. Thank you, and I, uh, I uh, apologize to the Vice President. His words are well taken. So I'll rephrase my uh, last statement to say, um, if you would uh, vote in favor of the taxpayer in reducing the size of government, then I especially urge you to participate in the election process. And thank, thank you, you Alderman Buck. Okay, moving on. Public forum? Dulcie Johnson. And could I have your address, please, Dulcie? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you, and you will have five minutes. Mayor Ryan, Deputy Clerk Long, City Attorney McLean, members of the council, and citizens. Back in June, when the mayor cast the deciding vote to allow the fire department to hire four more paramedics, he promised to present a long-range reorganization plan for the department by December 31st, 2010. Things got off to a flourish with a trip to Minnesota by Mayor Ryan, Chief Herman, and then City Assessor David Lutsky. Their trip included visits to two unlikely cities, Eden Prairie, which is a relatively new suburb of Minneapolis and is known as the Yuppie suburb, and Maple Grove, another Minneapolis suburb, which is a major shopping destination. There was an attempt to visit a western Wisconsin city on the return, but that didn't work out because, as I remember, the mayor or the fire chief was at a funeral. Sometime later, I heard Chief Herman mention that he had visited other Wisconsin cities, but it seemed that none of them, uh, none of them offered any likely scenarios, or at least any scenarios that the chief was willing to consider. I attended the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting on December 15th, hoping to learn about the long-range reorganization plan as listed on the amended agenda. I had emailed Alderman Kittleson on Monday asking if she was going to hold the mayor accountable for his promise to formulate a long-range reorganization plan for the department. What I learned at the meeting was, there is no plan. As chairman of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, Alderman Kittleson should have known, indeed must have known, that there was no plan. So why did she amend the agenda to include, and I quote, discussion and possible action on the long-range plan for reorganization of the Sheboygan Fire Department? Politics as usual. Chief Herman said he is reorganizing all the time that the department no longer has a fire inspector and that they have a new $500,000 pumper truck which can be operated with three firemen rather than using two vehicles which would need four firemen. That doesn't quite cut it, however, as a long-range reorganization plan. There were references at the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting as to the role of the Strategic Physical Planning Committee. If that committee is the key to the reorganization, why wasn't it utilized months ago? It's not as if the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee suddenly became a reality. In fact, it has been in existence and since at least 2003. I found doing, during my research that RO 88-10-11 on June 7th's council agenda, which dealt with lifting the hiring freeze and the hiring of four more paramedics, was referred to public protection and safety and the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. Why didn't Alderman Kittleson, as chairman of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, which oversees the fire department, initiate some discussion of the mayor's promise with the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. And please do not suggest that following up on what was promised would be micromanaging. At the meeting on the 15th, Chief Herman said, and I quote, everyone thinks reorganization means saving money, inferring that his idea of a reorganization of the fire department might not save money. But when Mayor Ryan spoke of reorganizing the department, he stated that his goal was to cut the fire department budget from $7 million to $4 million with the reorganization. Obviously, they are not on the same page. <clears throat> there were also references at the meeting about the ambulance referendum vis-a-vis -vis a long-range plan. The referendum had not yet surfaced when the mayor made his promise, and it is now six weeks past the election. So I find the referendum just another excuse. 
The mayor and Chief Herman should have created a reorganization plan with and without the ambulance. The current status of what was agreed to in June is that Chief Herman got his four new hires, the fire union got a promise of no layoffs in 2011 and two more days of vacation in exchange for a mere $90,000 in concessions, Mayor Ryan has not delivered on his promise, and the taxpayers will continue to pay the bill with no reorganization plan on the table. I am disappointed in the lack of leadership by the principals involved. The citizens, your constituents, expect and deserve responsible and responsive leadership. And this speaks loudly to the need for a city administrator Move sooner rather than later. Thank you. Second. <clears throat> Thank you once again, Dulcie. Uh, I would just like to point out that uh, in June, when I said that we would have a long-range plan for the fire department, uh, this was before uh, the referendum, the council voted to pass a referendum on the ambulance. It was also before the council voted 12-4 and 2 against, uh, guaranteeing 57 uh, full-time firefighter paramedic positions in the fire department. That was done after uh, June. For the year 2011, by contract, we have X amount of firefighters on the table of organization, which was voted for by the Common Council. The Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee is meeting weekly, weekly, to come up with a long-term plan, which will be instituted with the 2012 budget, which will include the fire department and every other department of this city. So as a mayor, I could throw out an, a plan right now for 2012. It would be hard to institute in 2011 because by vote of the council, we have guaranteed X amount of firefighters in 2011. So for me to throw out a long range plan for the fire department to enact today when we can't enact it does not make a heck of a lot of sense when we have the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee coming up with a long term strategic plan for the city, which will include the fire department and every other department, and which will be part of our 2012 negotiations in the summer of 2011 to steer the city forward. So that's uh, where we're at today. Um, did I come up with a long range plan? No, I did not, but there are reasons. Uh, and this will be a, a cooperative effort between myself between the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee and any other aldermen that have the time to attend those meetings by our department heads and by the citizens of the city. Thank you. Okay, moving on. We have uh, two public hearings this evening. We have a public hearing regarding just Kids Dental SC Project Midwestern Disaster Area Revenue Bonds Series 2010. Is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding this hearing? Second time, is there anybody that would like to be heard? And the third and last time, is there anybody that would like to be heard? Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the hearing be closed. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That hearing is closed. Number two, we have a public hearing regarding the industrial development revenue bond financing to benefit Torganol Incorporated project. Is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding the IRBs for Torganol? Second time, is there anybody that wishes to be heard? And for the third time, does anybody wish to be heard? Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the hearing be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is closed. <clears throat> Consent agenda 18-1 through 18-29. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that uh, all report of officers be accepted and placed on file. All report of committees be accepted and adopted, and all re resolutions be put upon the passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. 
Under discussion on the consent agenda, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a clarification on 1816. I know there was concern about the farmer's market last year uh, with the popcorn wagon. I'm assuming that that all went smoothly and that there was no problem. I did not hear any issues with the popcorn wagon this summer. Good. Bill Bittner is acknowledging that there were no problems. Nothing but good popcorn from the Excellent. popcorn wagon this year. I know that that was an issue last year. Okay, is there any other uh, discussion regarding the consent agenda? If there is none, roll call please. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. 15. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1830 through 1833 to be referred. Reports of officers to 1834 through 1837 to be referred. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, 1837, uh, I'd like that also refer to the uh, Finance Committee. Uh, since I've been on the Council, uh, any purchases of uh, police vehicles has come before the Finance Committee. Uh, unless Chief Domogolski has an absolute deadline that this has to be passed, I'd like, to, I'd like it to go to Finance. Chief, you okay with that? Okay, it will also be referred to Finance if everybody can make that note. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. So 18, uh, 38. 37. Wait, did we vote on that? 18, okay, that's to be referred, 1834 through 1837. 1838 lies over. Resolutions introduced three, 1839, by Alderperson Kittleson officially recognizing the Gatewood Neighborhood Association. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1840, by Alderpersons Hammond, Bauk, Boren, Rinfleisch, and Raisler, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract to equip City Hall with wireless connectivity. Alderman Hammond. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Hammond? Just a, a real quick question that's been asked by a couple of people. Is Director Omodio here? What's the time, Ryan, time frame? Probably uh, less than 30 days. Okay, thank you. Less than 30 days on the time frame if people didn't hear that. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Wiesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Va Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. 15. Motion carries, 1841, by Alderpersons Hannah Kittleson, Raisler, and Versi lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire two full-time telecommunicators in the police department. Alderman Hanna. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just, just a quick question. Is this to replace two people, or are we adding two more people? What is this? Uh, we're converting some people that are in the part-time position uh, to full-time. Chief, did you want to go over the specifics with them? <clears throat> It's to, to move less part-time people and create the full-time people. So it's, if everything works out, we won't be hiring anybody new. It's, we'll be converting employees that already work for the city. And it's really to make scheduling work out better for us. 
um, allow uh, us to do more training and, and things like that. It should actually save us money. Um, that's all we're doing is shifting some of the overtime funds out of overtime and then over to cover. And the way everything will work out, the benefits are going to work out better for us. Too. This is all within your budget? Yes. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Is there any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Horn? Aye. Bauk? Aye. 15. Motion carries, 1842 by all the persons, Hannah Kittleson, Raisler, and Versi, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire three police officers in the police department. Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If I may uh, speak on this, uh, these uh, officers are hired under a COPS grant, which is a federal grant. Uh, we'll pay full-time salary and benefits for these three new officers for a period of three years. So this is a good thing. We're adding three police officers to the streets, and we're doing that uh, courtesy of Washington, D.C. Is there any discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1843 and 1844 lie over. 1845 through 49 to be referred. Vice President Rinflesh? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On 1843, uh, that's involving the uh, tax incremental district. Uh, is being lied over. Is there a time frame that needs to be completed by the end of the year? Do we need suspension on that instead? I don't believe so, Chad. On TID 14, okay. there's, no, there's no deadline on it. Right, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinflesh. So 1843 and 44 do lie over. 1845 through 49 to be referred. Reports of Committee 7, 1850 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8898 based upon her failure to include all relevant convictions on her license, appli on her license application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. <coughs> Vice President Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is uh, Mary Jane Mendez here? She's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Thank you. Uh, it was a recommendation from the Law and License Committee to deny uh, based on uh, the record of violations. Uh, it was a recent record of violations uh, as well. We found it was to be an established pattern of uh, behavior that was uh, questionable, um, specifically for disorderly conducts. Uh, it was also stated by the ap applicant that uh, she actually did not need the license because she was looking for work in a factory right now. I had no place of employment right now, so I ask that we support the uh, report of committee and uh, deny the license. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Powers? Aye. Denver? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1851 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 8169 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his license application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is Andrew Marks here? He's here, Your Honor. Mr. Marks, if you'd like to step up front, please. Vice President Rindfleisch, please continue. The uh, recommendation of the committee was to deny, uh, based on the recent history, uh, the recent history um, including a damage to property in 2009, underage alcohol in 2010, um, and obstructing, uh, which is pending currently. Um, Mr. Marks did reveal 
the underage alcohol, but did not reveal the damage to property in 2009 and the obstruction, which is pending. Um, there are court fines that need to be paid prior to any license can be issued uh, if it is granted by this committee, uh, but that is uh, no need for a motion for that. Uh, it would have to be paid at the city clerk's office. Uh, he did uh, cooperate uh, with the committee uh, by appearing at the first time. Um, the concern was, however, that uh, uh, there seems to be a re relatively recent pattern of uh, uh, what we find to be unacceptable behavior. Uh, the, the council, excuse me, the committee did discuss and set, stated that we prefer to see at least one year uh, history without it having any problems uh, before considering uh, granting, app, granting the license. Uh, but at this time, our recommendation is to deny. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinflesh. Mr. Marks, would you like to speak on the issue? Um, yes, I made a mistake. I didn't put those on there. I should have. Uh, when I applied for the license, um, the damage to property was very costly, and I do regret it. Um, same as uh, the obstruction and underage. I just paid those today, actually, those, both of those fines. Um, I have the receipt for that. Um, I guess I bartend for a living, and I, I guess I made a very bad judgment call <laughs> that night when I got both those fines recently, and as well as the uh, property damage. Uh, I don't want to, I guess I want to get my license, and I'm seeing actually a psychiatrist now if that helps um, because uh, this depression and stuff like that. So not drinking a whole lot, actually. I'm 21 now. I don't go out at all because I'm on antidepressants, so they contradict themselves. So I'm paying monthly for insurance, and I, you know, I just, I, the behavior will, the pattern has, will stop. <laughs> and I just, I want to work, and um, it means a lot to me, so it's, um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Marks, if you can stay up there, please. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, sir, where are you going to be working with your license if you get it? Blue Light Bar. Uh, where is that located? 1029 North A Street, Sheboygan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. These uh, incidents you had, was this one evening that both, the, both these incidents happened? It was. Mm -hmm. And why did you not report them to the committee? It was a mistake, I guess, a lack of judgment. Um, I should have, and regret not. Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, to clarify, yes, the underage alcohol and the obstructing uh, was the same evening. Uh, two separate events took place, uh, one of which was uh, reported, the other one was not. I was stated in the committee that uh, the underage alcohol was reported because it was clear that it had something to do with the licensing feature and uh, the applicant was unclear of uh, the other items, damage to property and obstructing would have any pertinence to that at all. However, the, the application does state uh, when you sign it uh, that you're aware of, that you're listing any and all um, uh, convictions. Uh, and that could be you know, tickets or what, or, or not traffic tickets, but uh, anything that's um, would be out there as well. Um, so in my mind, it was close. Uh, personally, uh, my vote did go, uh, as I said to the applicant in that meeting, uh, to deny, uh, just based on the very recent history, uh, as I stated. But uh, it was a toss-up, really, for me. But it went that direction for the council's sake because of the recent history, 2009, and then the incident in 2010. Thank you, Vice President Rinflesh. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, sir, are you working at this establishment currently without the license? Um, yes, because uh, the owner is downstairs. Okay, so you can work, but you, my understanding is you can work without the license, but you cannot be there alone and you cannot close the establishment, is that right? Correct. Uh, is it going to be a hardship in the employment if you don't have the license? Would you be able to work with the owner and, and, under your current situation until you could prove yourself? I would, um, I, I think. Um, I would like to find more bartending jobs, but um, it's all kind of hinging on this. <laughs> Are you doing anything else currently besides bartending? No, not currently. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Uh, one of these was an underage drinking. Are you 21 years of age now? I am. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further questions? There are none. Roll call, please. An I vote will deny the license. A no vote will not deny it. Thank Anna? you, Mr. Marks. Please sit down. Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. 
Langeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Thirteen eyes, two no's. Motion carries. Reports of committees eight, 1852 by finance, recommending passing the final resolution regarding industrial development revenue bond fa financing to benefit Torganal Incorporated project. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and uh, adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1853 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget establishing estimated revenue and appropriation for the 2010 police department alcohol enforcement, speed enforcement, and DTACTS enforcement grants. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move that the reporter committee be accepted and adopted in the resolution put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Langeman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1854 lies over, 1855 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. SP 3-1, resolution number 168-1011 by Alderman Hammond, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a project agreement between the U.S. EPA, the Wisconsin DNR, Sheboygan County, and the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If I may say a word on this one, uh, this is authorizing the uh, city's portion of the money to fund the project plan for the continued dredging of the river after the Superfund portion is done. Um, with the Superfund portion, we now have uh, up to $12 million that they're counting the Superfund portion towards local match. Uh, this is not counting uh, some potential um, participation we may have from the private sector in this project. To the end result will be that we are going to have a clean river, a uh, river that is capable of sustaining fish habitat. And the side benefit is that we will have a navigable river that we can again take boats up. So this is a good thing. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Longeman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 1856 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1857 is an RO by the city clerk submitting as a matter of record a communication from Eastern Shores Library System informing Maeve Quinn, president of the Mead Public Library Board, that the library is not in compliance with the library system membership requirements for municipal public libraries per the state statutes. Do you like it at finance? We'll refer this to finance. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. It's yours. 
1858 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Richard Hartman regarding the possible cost for a name change and repainting of the city's buses. We will have this referred to the transit authority. Move to adjourn. Uh, before we adjourn, if I uh, may have one word, um, after this evening's meeting, uh, the Common Council and the uh, department heads of the city and their significant others are invited to go to city streets uh, to a 10-day city holiday get-together. This is a get-together, a social event. Uh, this is not a council meeting or an extension of a council meeting and no city business will be discussed. I just thought I should reveal that the uh, council will all be getting together this evening. So that will be at city streets immediately following the council meeting. Thank you. Second. Motion to adjourn and a second under discussion. There's none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.